Hello and welcome to Media Monitor on the SABC News Channel, independent and impartial. This is where we take a look inside the world of media, analysing the trends, the issues and the reporting of some of the week's top stories. I'm Peter Ndoro and this is what's coming up on the show today. Uh, today we pay tribute to veteran broadcaster Bob Mabena who died this past Monday. Female journalists have been at getting the short end of the stick in terms of safety from harassment at work to insecurity threats and online trolls. We'll be discussing both online and offline safety and how it sh should uh, be taken care of in order to ensure the efficiency of reporting. And also in our News in History feature, this week we take you back to 2012 where sadly uh, miners were gunned down by police uh, in the Marikana massacre. We'll have a look back on that day. So that's the show, but remember you can engage with us on social media using the Twitter handle, hashtag SABC Media Monitor. You can also share your views with us on WhatsApp. And the number to use is 065-862-4548, 065 8624548. And if you're outside South Africa, don't forget to put plus 27. Now, before we get into our highlighted stories on the program, let's first take a look at uh, what's on the front pages of our Sunday newspapers this morning. And we start with the Sunday Times. And the Sunday Times is leading with President Ramaphosa's announcement last night, uh, uh, sweeping aside most of the COVID-19 uh, lockdown restrictions, describing it as a bold move intended to restart an economy that has been shattered by nearly five months of lockdown. South Africa goes to level two lockdown from midnight on Monday. The City Press, let's take a look at that. Uh, that's also leading with the COVID-19 lockdown restrictions being uh, decreased to level two, saying that the president is going for broke. Uh, this has uh, COVID-19 infections have shown a decline and uh, recoveries have reached almost 80%. Uh, the president has opened up almost all economic activity in the country. The paper also has a striking picture uh, reminding us uh, as readers on the 8th anniversary of the Marikana massacre that left 34 uh, mine workers dead from police fire. The Sunday Independent has uh, led with COVID-19 PPE corruption again this week, pointing to the Limpopo Health Department awarding a company in KwaZulu-Natal a uh, 185 million rand contract to supply COVID-19 personal protective equipment. And this despite the company not appearing on the official database of suppliers. Yeah, the paper says that the majority of the 216 hand-picked companies awarded contracts in the province appear to be politically connected. The Sunday Tribune is also leading with the national lockdown story. A sigh of relief is their headline as alcohol and tobacco bans have been lifted as part of level two lockdown regulations. The paper says this comes against the backdrop of mounting pressure on the president to open up the economy further. The national state of disaster has been extended to September the 15th though. The Sunday World has a grim story on its front page pointing to mortuaries being overwhelmed by COVID-19 deaths in uh, the mid-May, June and July. Now these months saw a surge in the number of lives claimed by the pandemic. One undertaker said that uh, he was arranging 34 funerals per week. All right, so those are your newspapers and uh, we'll take another look at them a little bit later on with our guest editor. But first, let's take a look at uh, some of the trending topics on social media because after all, a lot of you get your news from there. And this is the list. I mean, some of these are your normal ones. UFC, always popular, and that was number one a short while ago. But for me, the one that really is the important one is this one, Marikana Massacre. And uh, that's been generating a lot of uh, traffic at the moment. And of course, today is the eighth anniversary. And uh, let's take a look at uh, some of the messages. And some of them are pretty self-explanatory. Never forget Marikana, that's from Ali Naka, eight years later. 
And then uh, we see other people. Today marks eight years since the Marikana massacre. We salute and remember the lives of those who paid the ultimate sacrifice for a decent living wage in South African mines. May their souls continue to rise in power. A luta continua. And this really is a theme that I think is going to be seen throughout the course of the day. Uh, people sharing their thoughts and sharing their pictures. And uh, some of those, like this one, iconic picture that really came to represent uh, the Americana massacre. And this was before the shootings took place. And uh, this image has lived long. As we said, eight years later, um, a lot of people saying that um, democracy has, I mean, that uh, justice hasn't been brought uh, to the people. And uh, again, we should never forget Marikana, uh, these messages coming in. And so if you go onto the, onto the uh, Twitter handles, you'll see that this really has been uh, the overwhelming sentiment. And today, marking eight years since the Marikana massacre, a lot of people still saying that nobody um, has been brought to account. On Monday, veteran radio personality Bob Mabena passed away. He died at a Johannesburg hospital after a short stay over the weekend. He was 51 years old. Mabena was a renowned television and radio host. He started his radio career in 1989 at Radio Bob. After spending three years at Radio Bob, he was recruited by Radio Metro and for over 30 years of his career, he's worked for Highfelt Stereo, Kaya FM, Power FM, and other notable media houses. Let's listen to some radio broadcasters sharing their thoughts about this giant's passing. He had a 360 understanding of the radio medium. Bob Mabena is an institution of black radio in South Africa. Bob Mabena's career predates democracy in South Africa, but Bob Mabena defines post-democracy radio in South Africa because he was at the helm. He gave me a five thousand rands voucher to go and buy music because he said you look like you've got everything you need what else am I gonna do let me get you a voucher personally I don't remember radio without Bob Mabena and also my own boy a TV as I present about studio mix and you're also checking in back like with how much was just that I want like so he he rounded up uh, everything of what a Cassie boy really should maybe aspire to grow up uh, to be but Minanja I was just you know, shocked at the fact that we are born at a pop, we are plum and we are out. We are almost as if, like, try not to look at me as a celebrity. And these are the early guys that ushered me into the industry and made me feel comfortable in my skin. Okay, and in the industry, it's pana so. And uh, when you have time, you give your people time, young know? I remember when he came to Metro and, and he was Radio Metro before, you know, and he, he was on the drive and he had, I remember even the jingle, you know, I can't wait to get home, do you? I got so much work to do. My banner, the jammer. So he was part of my childhood heroes, but the blessing of having to work in the same building with him and interact with him and get to talk to him, that was a gift on its own. He became a larger than life personality who influenced um, his peers and, you know, um, aspiring young people alike. Um, it's, it's really a, a sad day and we have really lost, you know, um, a, a legend in, in radio broadcasting. I'm a bit like four years older than him, but I've learned a lot from him, being young. He's the guy who inspired a generation, and then he created a subculture which carried on and on and on. Well, there you have it. Uh, I mean, for someone who's had a career uh, more than 30 years, that's a whole generation of people, uh, several generations, depending on how young you were when you first started uh, listening to him on the radio stations. And uh, always in prime time, when no matter which radio, sta he, radio station he was, well, there's some people who are still in the game who uh, 
uh, shared some airtime with him and to tell us a little bit more about Bob Mabena and uh, what his contribution to broadcasting is, is a veteran broadcaster and producer, radio and television, who himself has had a distinguished career on radio spanning 30 years across 25 radio stations. And that's uh, our very own SAFM's Ernest Pillay. Ernest, uh, thanks very much indeed uh, for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. It's a very sad time, especially for people like you who uh, grew up with Bob uh, in the radio world. It certainly is, uh, Peter, and a good morning to you. Uh, we're still coming to terms with the passing uh, of uh, this legendary friend, and uh, as you said, it's influenced and made such a, a, a delible mark in the broadcasting space. And uh, I just want to say, first up, uh, my deepest condolences to his wife, uh, Eucharist, and the children as well. So, so yes, indeed. I mean, uh, that's why we're telling the story today. Uh, it just shows the significance uh, and, and the change and how much uh, Bob Mabena has touched uh, the larger uh, broadcast community and, of course, the millions of listeners. All right, we'll talk about uh, his work and his legacy just now, but I remember that you worked together at Metro and it was a very special time because uh, the democracy was young and there was a new energy in the country and uh, all of us were young at that stage. And what was it like uh, doing Radio Metro, working with Bob Mabena and uh, uh, carrying the station? Um, and what was it like, that experience uh, back then with him? It was amazing. I mean, he came through in 1992. Uh, I'd already been on a year or almost two years at Radio Metro at the time and bursting with energy he was. But as you rightfully say, Peter, so was the rest of the country, uh, weren't we? We were on the verge of uh, experiencing a new democracy and we were just alive with possibilities. I mean, it was just a match uh, made in, 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 in radio heaven, if you like. And here was this guy, he came through, had passion and fire in him uh, to make a difference in something that I think was a God-given talent. Uh, to do radio but uh, you know as as, as they say uh, talent alone won't get you too far so he managed to to merge that talent with skill passion and and, and drive and once you do that you would know peter once you do that uh, then your craft becomes priceless and uh, like you you know uh, longevity was the other thing we've seen a lot of uh, personalities come and go over time how do you think he was able to keep it going for more than three decades and always in prime time? I, I think it's a combination of the things I mentioned. It's, it's God-given talent, uh, uh, skills, it's always sharpening your skills. He honed his craft all the time. And of course, uh, ultimately, the, the passion that comes with it. Uh, but he constantly wanted to challenge himself. I mean, I was just recalling uh, back in those days, uh, we, we didn't have production houses that produced jingles, you know, and liners and all of those wonderful things, uh, pieces of production that you hear when we are on the radio. We didn't have production houses as we do today. Uh, it was all done in-house. And guess what, Peter? You had to do it yourself. So we were spending all of our times and days uh, in the corridors of the SABC and particularly Radio Metro down at K2 level, Radio Park, you would know that place. Yeah. And, and, and Bob was always in production, uh, noises coming through the production, and I mean uh, uh, production noises, not crazy noises. He was always trying to do something. Can you imagine in those days, I mean, there was an internet. Uh, he was a big Tupac fan, as you know, and uh, many other musicians, Arrested Development was just, uh, the, the group was just breaking into the scene as well. You would listen in the afternoon of the Joyride, Bob is an exclusive clip of uh, either of uh, these uh, great uh, uh, rap artists of the day. Uh, you, you know, so he spent all of the time dedicated. We all did, but you know, when you grow, go the extra mile, uh, you yield great results. And I think that's what kept him going. And that's what uh, keeps some of us in, in the business uh, st still around and loving it. So can you remember the first time you met him? Did you get on straight away? We, we got on like a house on fire. I mean, I, I, I said earlier uh, when I was on uh, Metro FM and other platforms just reflecting on our time, I think the age thing also worked in our favor. Uh, remember at the time when he comes through in 1992, Metro or Radio Metro has, has been on air at that time 
for about five, six years. I mean, Radio Metro launched back in 1986. So you had uh, the, the, the older folks, and I say this with much respect, uh, Treasure Shabalalas and the Lakin Tulis and, and those guys. So we were of the younger breed, if you like. And, and again, it was the brilliance of uh, the founding station manager, uh, Mr. Kurs Khadebe, his forward thinking, because he was almost kind of creating Team B, if you like. So. So we got along like a house on fire the uh, uh, first time we met, and uh, we've been friends uh, ever since, up, up, up to the point when he again broke the mold, uh, uh, brave as he was. He took on the metal and, and went into Heifeld Stereo, which at the time was a predominantly uh, a white audience-driven radio station, uh, given the audience dem demographic uh, segmentations of, of, of those days. And he was brave enough to go in there. I followed suit in 1997 to go and start out a brand new radio station, Kaya FM. So again, he was leading the charge. That kind of made it easy as well uh, for one to break away from the mothership uh, which was Radio Metro back then. And, uh, uh, you know, he, he flourished even at Highfield Stereo. So, um, look, you're a giant in this uh, uh, business yourself, um, and uh, you all kind of stood on your own ground. But I guess you can't help from learning to learn from each other. Were the things that you picked up from him? And I'm sure he must have noticed things about you. But what did you learn from him? Uh, there's quite a, a number of things. I mean, uh, the diligence, uh, again, and the passion, but he did it with such uh, joy. And uh, again, I was saying, he was almost childlike uh, in, in his fun ways, uh, you know, driven by his personality. Uh, one thing that comes to mind, as I said, we, we, we kind of drifted away and went and joined independent broadcasters, but our career paths would meet again at uh, the SABC. I had just left uh, uh, commercial radio as programming specialist. He came in as GM of commercial, uh, Metro 5 and Good Hope, and I was heading up programming at PBS Radio. Now, now one of the things, as you say, uh, we continued inspiring uh, uh, each other. We would go out and present strategies of where we intend taking SABC radio as a whole. I took comfort, Peter, knowing that uh, Bob was either presenting alongside me, before me, or after me, because of one fundamental reason. I knew that our uh, trail of thought, or at least our insights and thinking, in as far as taking radio, black radio forward, will not be too far apart. And thus, you know, uh, it will be easy for our strategies to, 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 to be endorsed, if you like, by the executives of the time. I remember at this one presentation we just presented, I went first, he came after me, we were presenting in front of uh, the whole executive of the SABC and the board. And uh, during, I'd call it tea break, I almost said smoke break, but during tea break, uh, he looked at me and uh, he just said smoke, as you said, that's what he called me. He said, smoke, we've got this. And I knew it was, it was that kind of uh, confidence that he would steal in, instill in me and vice versa, uh, as you said. We, we were, you know, brothers keepers, if you like. All right. I mean, it's it's quite a story. Th thirty-one days, you, thirty-one plus years. You can't condense it in a few minutes. But I suppose, it, as we conclude our conversation, what would you say his legacy really would be? Uh, I, I I think uh, I, I would say this uh, out, outright, uh, uh, Peter. My my message as we commemorate and celebrate this great. Uh, legend in, in, in the broadcasting space, radio in particular. My message to the current, and more importantly, to the next generation of broadcasters. The numbers uh, or, or, or the following on your Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook pages do not necessarily equate to how great you are. And I say this, I'll repeat it, your numbers on social media do not equate to how great you are. I say this because it's been very evident in this week and today as we are chatting that here we are celebrating this great giant called Bob Mabena. He didn't have a million followers, at least not on his social media platforms, but look at the outpouring love from the millions of people that he managed to touch through his craft and uh, through the microphone. So here's my advice that I would like uh, people to draw out of uh, the, the, the successful life of this great radio giant is hone your craft, sharpen your skills, and leverage your gifts. If you do that, you might just uh, crack it in this business. Ernest Smoke Pile, thanks so much indeed for sharing uh, your thoughts and your memories uh, of this great legend, Bob Mabena. Thanks so much for your time. Only a pleasure, Peter. Thank you.
All right, so that's a veteran broadcaster, and they're still at it. He's uh, with us at SAFM now. And, uh, yeah, 25 radio stations over 30 years. A remarkable story remembering uh, Bob Marbena. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, after that, we'll talk to another DJ about uh, online radio, but also we'll get his thoughts on Bob Marbena too. Less at clicks with great savings. Buy any three Colgate products, cheapest one free. Buy the new Yardley Stay Fast Matte Mousse Makeup, now $169.95. Or buy Listerine Zero Mouthwash, one litre, two for 143 Rand. And save 20% on Hask Tea Tree and Shea Butter hair care products. Clicks. Feel good. Pay less. Fellow South Africans, the road is calling. Whether you go to Worcester or to work out, to visit Gorko or the Game Reserve, the question is, can you pay less for driving less? Yes! With Chili from King Price, the less you drive, the less you pay. And paying $2.99 for comprehensive car insurance just makes sense. You've got zero to lose and plenty to save. Chili from King Price. Visit kingprice.co.za or download our app. With MTN Business Broadband LTE, fast, reliable business internet is as simple as plug and play. Plug in a fixed LTE Wi-Fi router and work anywhere for just $199 per month on a 24-month MTN Business Broadband LTE 30 gig plan. It comes with a total of 60 gigs of data every month to work, conference, share, download and more. When you need a fast, reliable business connection, we're good together. Sign up or upgrade at an MTN store today. Everywhere you go, MTN. Trenches of business, don't lose sight of the bigger picture. At Medbank, we'll help guide and structure innovative financing solutions to take your business growth to the next level. To guide your growth, search Nedbank Bigger Picture Business Banking. community project. Welcome back. You're still watching Media Monitor on the SABC News Channel. A big question that's uh, being asked is, what's the future of radio? And that's a question that media owners are grappling with and even future investors with the disruption of digital technologies brought on by the fourth industrial revolution. The radio experience has been changing and will likely change even more in the coming years. Now, one uh, new platform that has been the growth of online internet radio stations. Much of this growth has been because of the expansion of listening to radio online via computer or smartphone, whilst uh, many traditional radio stations have expanded their offerings to online streaming. And there's a growing number of online radio stations, uh, mobile data costs increasing, Wi-Fi usage, and perhaps uh, uh, the key to the future of this uh, form of radio. Now, one station, though, that has uh, gone online has been found, has found a unique way to reach its large audiences. Uh, Massive Metro has been reaching taxi commuters since 2017. And to tell us more, I'm now joined by a renowned broadcaster, TV and radio, a music producer, and a prolific entrepreneur, Sibusiso Liope, who's affectionately known, of course, as DJ Swoo. Thanks so much indeed for joining us, uh, DJ Swoo. Welcome to the very program. Good morning to you, Peter. Thank you very much for the invite. I'm really humbled to get this opportunity to um, speak to South Africans. A very good morning to the country at large. We're going to talk about online radio, but we can't do that without giving you an opportunity also to share your thoughts about Bob Mabena, someone that you knew well. Uh, 
Hello, DJ Spoo. I was just saying, I want to start by just asking you to reflect a little bit on uh, Bob uh, Mabena. Uh, can you hear me? DJ Spoo, can you hear me? All right, so we're going to try and uh, reconnect uh, with uh, DJ Spoo. We're struggling to get uh, his uh, uh, audio going there. But uh, essentially, we're talking about online radio. And this is something that's uh, starting to come to the fore a little bit more as people have started to uh, um, get smartphones. And also data costs, we're seeing them come down slowly. But there's this connection, of course, that people have got now more and more with Wi-Fi. Sometimes it's free. And as a result, you're hearing more and more and seeing a lot more uh, people listening to radio and podcasts uh, on their computers, on their smartphones, um, and uh, other listening devices. And so the question now becomes, uh, is the radio in its traditional format going to disappear, or what's going to happen? But what we've already noticed is that a lot of the traditional radio stations have already started to offer um, streaming uh, services online as well. So they're doing both. But there are a number of radio stations that are online only or um, dedicated online stations. And the question is, South Africa in particular, are we ready, given the cost of data, and uh, I want to talk to DJ Spoo because uh, he started uh, Massive Metro with some partners. And they have a very interesting way of uh, getting this concept. And a lot of commuters have had the opportunity to enjoy this radio station uh, uh, on their taxi. So we'll be chatting to him about that. And also talking to him, of course, about Bob Mabena, who died after a 31-year career in... Uh, the music business and in and, and, and radio generally. All right, so uh, we're going to carry on trying to get uh, hold of uh, DJ Spoo, but uh, let's take a quick break and hopefully we'll be able to get him by the time we come back. Stay with us. called Outurance to find out if they can save you money on your car insurance, you're in luck. Because if they can't beat what you're currently paying, now you can ask them for 500 Rand. And if you've been with the same insurer and claim free for the past three years, then tell them you want a massive 1,500 Rand. Savings or cash, you always get something out. SMS card 44211 or call 08600 60,000 for a quote. The doings was a rustige area, toe ek nog a kind was. Manne wat sam met my gehoot geraak het, het in dwelms geval. Ek is na en buis, ek het ek pad gekies, wat vir my veilig is, en dis om rugby te speel. Ek speel hier vir die local club, the doings United. SABC het my leven baie verander as kind. Hoe meer rugby gekyk het op TV, hoe beter het ek geword. So dit my geleer wat die mens ek moet wees, dier SABC 2, wat het moendlik gemaakt het. Violent protests have rocked Cape Town for the past two weeks, leading to 30 arrests. number of protesters that they are bemoaning what they call poor service delivery, especially to colored communities. We are not getting a fair or equal chance in everything we do. We are the people that is doing all the work, but we are the people that always has to get the second class treatment. We are tired of living in backyards we are tired of seeing our kids standing on corners, becoming drug addicts, our girls prostituting themselves for money. Welcome back. You're watching Media Monitor. Now, in our Back in History feature this week, we take you back to this day in 2012 when 34 miners were tragically killed, at least 78 others wounded in what would become known as the Marikana Massacre. This tragedy was the most lethal use of force by South African security forces against civilians since 1976. This is how the SABC covered the story that day.
Good morning. The National Police Commissioner General Ria Piecha is expected to brief the media later today about the bloodshed that occurred at Lonmin's Marikana Platinum outside Rustenburg yesterday. Unconfirmed reports say up to 18 people were killed when the police opened fire on striking workers. The police have not released any statements on the number of people killed or wounded. The police opened fire after workers armed with pangas and sharpened iron rods had apparently advanced towards them, crossing the barrier line they had set up. They first used stun grenades and rubber bullets, but then switched to live ammunition. The police had earlier ordered the gathering of around 3,000 people to disperse. The police operation followed a week-long standoff between police and striking miners, which claimed 10 lives, including two security guards and two policemen. The initial outbreak of violence saw rival Union's NUM and AMCO blaming each other. The Independent Police Investigative Directorate says it will investigate yesterday's shooting. President Jacob Zuma has expressed shock and sadness at the loss of life at the mine. He's also urged all stakeholders to remain calm. Just as President Jacob Zuma landed in the Mozambican capital Maputo last night, he was greeted by the news of the killings of mine workers in Lonmin. Responding to the incident through his spokesperson, the president expressed his shock and sadness at the event. He urged all stakeholders to remain calm. The president is concerned that an industrial dispute, which could be resolved through all our mechanisms provided in our democratic laws, which can be resolved through dialogue, has degenerated to this point with such tragic loss of life. We are calling upon all sectors, the workers' movement, the business sector, to work together with government, including the law enforcement agencies, to help prevent this thing from degenerating any further and to come forward and assist in resolving this dispute in a manner that would befits the development of our country. President Zuma is attending the SADC summit in Mabuto, where he will give an update on his mediation efforts in Zimbabwe and Madagascar. The summit ends on Saturday. Zondelimbe, Jose PC News, Maputo, Mozambique. All right, so that was uh, eight years ago, uh, remembering that tragic day uh, in 2012 that happened at Marikana, and you'll be hearing quite a lot about that uh, during the course of today. All right, so let's go back to our earlier story where we uh, are looking at the future of radio and uh, we were talking, hoping to talk to DJ Smu, who's uh, uh, with a, a, tr a radio station called the Massive, uh, Met Ma Ma Massive Metro, online radio station, but with a twist. And a lot of uh, uh, people, commuters on taxis are enjoying their music and it is an online station. Uh, but the distribution of it is what's quite unique. But uh, let's talk to him now and uh, get a sense of what the station is about. DJ Spoo, thanks so much for joining us. Um, before we talk about uh, the radio experience, can we talk about Bob Mabena, someone that you knew? Uh, I am humbled to get this opportunity to, to say a word or two. But um, I, mean, I was inspired by Bob Mabena ever since I was a kid. Ekabaz uh, Jela, my mom's will tell you, I always used to watch him. I've watched, I've listened to every radio show he's ever had on every radio station he's ever worked for. He's always been my hero. When we were kids growing up in the 90s and um, the early 2000s, obviously, as, as an adult, I got into the entertainment business myself. But for me, Bob Mapena is an institution. Bob Mapena is an icon. May his soul rest in peace, and I'm glad and I'm humbled to have had an opportunity to tell him in his face, because I'm one of those people every time when I get an opportunity to bump into you, I'll let you know of the role you played in my life. And he embraced me like I was his equal. It was like I was his friend. And um, as I grew into the industry, took me under his wing, he sort of mentored me, and we sort of became like a bigger brother, younger brother type of friend. Um, some people might, may have seen the interview that I've just done with him on the internet, on my podcast and you can tell that these people have got chemistry um he laid down his entire life story in his own words and if you haven't had a chance to check out that interview you'll even respect the man even more with the contributions he's done in south african broadcasting he's put other people on he's given other people an opportunity to be on radio there's a lot of youngsters right now who are verbally confessing of how he has helped him so um as far as that issue is concerned i just wanted to pass my condolences to the family and just to tell the new generation um to, to that um we have to 
you know, continue to celebrate icons like Bob Mabena. Bob Mabena is a giant. Unfortunately, with the conditions that we're in in the country currently, you, you can't really see the magnitude of the type of funeral he was going to have. Bob Mabena's funeral was going to be humongous. Obviously, right now, there's um, COVID-19 rules and regulations. But, but let the new generation understand that um, we have lost mm -hmm. an icon. We have lost a hero. We have lost a bigger brother. We have lost uh, a community builder. We've lost an inspiration, an example, and may so rest in peace. His name will forever live on in South African entertainment. From music, presenting, broadcasting, radio, television, business, entrepreneurship, he got into corporate. He worked, he worked at the SABC. He managed a couple of radio stations. He went to the coast. He managed two radio stations there. He came back. He went on air and he still loved being a, a leader while he was humble enough to still teach the new generation broadcasting. So for that, I just wanted to honor him. Thank you. All right. Thanks so much indeed for that, uh, DJ Spoo. And in fact, his career more than three decades and uh, radio changed quite a lot in that time. And uh, you as a young person and someone who's been in it in, in, the, in the latter half of his career, um, you've lived through a lot of rapid change and we're seeing these new innovations and one of them is online radio. Tell us about this massive metro uh, story because you've taken online radio but you used a, a, a unique vehicle to get it to the audiences. Yes sir, first off I would just like to honour the SABC and just appreciate the institution for having discovered talents like mine for having given us an opportunity to shine. Um, ordinary township kids like myself, like Bob Mapena, like yourself, Mr. Pete and um, a whole lot of other young people who end up shining and becoming global icons or becoming uh, a pride for this country all over the world were discovered or were given a platform to shine by the SABC. So thank you for the SABC. I'll forever be grateful of the opportunity that I got to learn broadcasting on television, friends like these and on radio on uh, Metro FM. Uh, we moved on to start our own startup radio station that gives young people a chance to come and learn broadcasting. Now, what gives it a bit of a twist is we went overseas to go look for streaming devices that we put into minibus taxis that bring in the signal. And then the people in the taxis, they're able to then stream our online radio station using these streaming signals um, that we have agreed upon with the taxi drivers to um, allow us to, to access the audience in their taxes because they are a captive audience. So we've got screens, screens, um, visual screens, digital screens in about 40 taxi ranks across the country. When people are queuing in the mornings, waiting for um, taxis to go to work, they can see some of our clients' um, adverts on, their, on those billboards. And then it also communicates with our radio when they get inside the taxi. So it's been a different twist but it's still an online radio station. It's an online offering, which only now we are glad that we partake, we partook to, to um, this route a few years ago, as now the whole world can see that um, digital is the future. And I think um, potential investors and clients are starting to look at radio stations like us right now as radio stations that they can either work with or invest in or partner with. And uh, we're looking forward to partnering with the likes of SABC one day or getting bought off by the SABC and becoming a, a big and a, a giant and broadcasting to the entire nation. But um, we're still young. Uh, we've got a long way to go. We've got a long journey. We get support from the industry. We get support from our clients. We get support from musicians and people who want to come and share their stories on air, entrepreneurs and community leaders. We are very community-based. Our payoff line says, the humble party, meaning we are humble. We are with the community and um, we just want to grow. We want to learn. We consistently learn from big giants like your Ukozis, your Mkobo Wenenes, your Five FMs, your Metro FMs. They are our inspiration and benchmark. We continue to learn from them. All right. And I suppose um, what, what, what made it work is that, look, data still costs quite a bit and the average person can't afford to be uh, streaming and listening to radio online. And I suppose your vehicle has made it possible for um, the, the, the ordinary citizens of our country to be able to listen to digital quality radio. It's beautiful because once you go to our, our website, we've got podcasts of every show, every guest that you might have missed because right now radio is starting to be listened to by appointment. And because it's um, amalgamating with the multimedia, 
with visuals, with pictures, uh, uh, with social media, etc. We have been able to find a nice model for ourselves. And um, it is growing. It's doing really well. And young people are excited that we give, we're giving them quality programming. Although we are an online station, we never undermine our listeners. We never swear on air. We don't do the things that are not supposed to be done. And mm -hmm. we'll do, although we understand that the online space is unregulated, a lot of radio stations, they do whatever they like on air. But we treat ourselves as a commercial station. As I say, my background is from the SABC. So I'm somebody who has um, modeled the radio station together with my business partners. We've modeled it around the SABC radio stations because we have to be community-based. We have to be about the community. We have to be involved with our listeners, the community, informing them, educating them, entertaining them. And we are growing like, like, like amazingly. I think God has been great on our side. And we appreciate these types of opportunities to be able to reach out to the rest of the country and say, hey, we are here, we are available, and we are a friend of the big players, and we want to work with you. We want you guys to come and invest. We want you guys to come and advertise with us. And the people at large out there, we want you guys to give us the support and listen to small stations because uh, the, the lifestyle is sort of evolving and changing and moving towards the internet. So we are slowly moving towards that direction. So we do offer people... Um, the variety they can either download the app they can stream us live on our website listen live or they can listen to some of the radio stations that we've got affiliated our partnerships with radio stations like Madibang fm in the northwest Peli fm in pretoria and currently where the radio station that discovered my talent voice of tembisa my radio show goes out to voice of tembisa three to six monday to friday and, and we appreciate that community radio stations can appreciate the partnership with um radio stations like us. I think it's exciting times. And I want to say to young South Africans out there, as much as the energy has been low, everybody's been worried about their jobs. I think it's a great opportunity for young people start to start seeking opportunities on the internet online. There's a lot of opportunities on how young on how young people can make themselves money. A lot of young South Africans. DJ Spoo, I think that's a great place to end this conversation. A very exciting project and uh, pioneering as always. Uh, that's kind of uh, synonymous with you now. So thanks so much for sharing your story and uh, let's see what uh, the next chapter holds. Thanks so much indeed. Thank you very much, Sam. May God bless you and all the best to you as well. I learned a lot from you from the <laughs> MBA class and Thank I'm glad you. some of the lessons that I learned from the MBA class are being put into good use in some of my projects that I've started. May God bless you, South Africa. Thank you very much for giving me an ear, SABC. My love Thank forever goes to you. And uh, lastly, once again, condolences to the family of Mr. Bob Mabena. Thank you so much indeed. That's uh, DJ Spoo, prolific entrepreneur, uh, producer, musician, you name it, he's done it all, but uh, talented massively. All right, let's uh, move on and uh, a story that takes us to the north of our continent. An Algerian court on Monday sentenced journalist Khalid Drareni to three years in prison on charges of harming national unity. A rights group that defends detainees said... Well, Drareni is uh, 40, is an editor of the Caspar Tribune news site and a correspondent for the French uh, uh, language channel uh, TV Saint Monde, uh, was arrested on March the 5th on charges of inciting an unharmed gathering and uh, endangering national unity after covering demonstrations by the Hirak protest movement. Moving to West Africa, on August the 3rd, a number of police officers beat uh, Orabeese, a correspondent for the privately owned Daily Post newspaper, whilst he was reporting on officers' enforcement of COVID-19 restrictions in the Old Garage, a suburb of the western Osun state's uh, capital, o Oshogbo. According to journalists uh, who uh, spoke with CPJ, that's the uh, Committee to pr pr Protect Journalists uh, via phone and a messaging app, and a report by the Daily Post. Well, uh, Orabiese told uh, the CPJ that uh, police questioned him after he photographed officers beating people who'd been allegedly violated the state's requirement to wear face masks and said that uh, Adebayo Adeleke, a local state commissioner who was uh, at the scene, ordered the officers uh, to attack him.
All right, uh, very sad to see some of these stories about uh, the challenges that journalists are going through. Very soon we're going to go to East Africa. We'll talk to a trainer on safety on journalists and uh, particularly with regards to women and uh, some of the challenges that they're facing. That's still to come. Stay with us. the SABC has been at the forefront of broadcast radio and television, bringing joy and happiness to the homes of many while continually redefining South Africa's media landscape. We do not speak with one voice. We let every voice in our nation find expression in language and in culture. We do not just bring the news. We provide content that is independent and impartial. We do not just broadcast sport, but we do it for the love of the game. <laughs> we do not just entertain, we deliver local content, representing Mzansi for sure. We empower you with educational content that reminds you where you belong. With 19 radio stations and 5 TV channels, SABC 1, 2, 3, Education and SABC News Channel, we ensure that everyone in our nation is informed, educated and entertained. All the while knowing that at 84, there's still much more yet to come. Hashtag 84 years of SABC. Right now, welcome back. You're still watching Media Monitor. And uh, we get now to a story where many journalists, especially female and uh, gender non conforming reporters, uh, are familiar with receiving angry messages, threats, and taunts online in response to their reporting. This is attributed to the social construct of the environment. Uh, journalists uh, I've been working in, which has created the image of uh, a female as being weak and uh, makes them look vulnerable to, uh, makes them vulnerable actually to such attacks. Now, according to a study, attacks and harassment impact on female journalists and their reporting. And for women journalists, physical and online attacks may result in emotional stress and long-term psychological trauma. Well, to talk to us a little bit further about this, we're now joined by Vincentia Foucault, who is a media development expert, and uh, she talks to us about some of these challenges. Thanks so much indeed for joining us, and uh, welcome to the program, uh, Jambo. Jambo Peter, how is South Africa? South Africa is good, and I hope that uh, East Africa is also good. But this is uh, quite a sad story, uh, a challenging one that we're talking about, that uh, uh, we, female journalists and uh, perhaps people who are gender non-conforming, the kind of harassment that they are facing online uh, in particular. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, the kinds of harassment and problems uh, and challenges that uh, journalists are facing uh, from what you've been seeing? Thank you so much, Peter. Um, recently, I was involved in um, training for 200 uh, women journalists from East Africa, and or like from Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Ethiopia, Rwanda, and, and Sudan and other countries. And the training was on safety and security of journalists and we focused on a number of things, but one of the things that popped up really um, hard and clearly was on uh, sexual harassment. Um, and this has contributed uh, for journalists who are working in the newsrooms or when they go talk to sources and sometimes even with them, their mentors. And for me as a trainer, this was really an alarm because it came from almost every journalist because every Saturday we used to have live sessions where uh, we would 
deep dive into the questions and the issue that the women journalists are facing every day and the questions or the issues that have been raised were definitely on sexual harassment and the challenge as on how to deal with this with the sexual harassment because sometimes you find most of these um the harassers might be the bosses or most of the say media houses or um, uh, the places where the journalists are working they don't have um you know those kind of mechanisms mm -hmm. where they can report and i also discovered that most of these journalists do not know how to um to handle um such kind of problems how to address yeah. them how to deal with them and um as a as a means to support them was on how we can come up with even a deeper uh session on addressing such kind of issues so um thank you so much peter yeah. and, and the whole All team right. so, also so, for considering this topic yeah so what kind of uh, harassment you say sexual harassment what kind of things typically are they facing? Well, um, maybe I think it's important also to um, highlight or underscore yeah. the fact that now with the digital media, the harassment is also very um, growing actually in, in, in social media and online. And this could be um, messages or stalking right. or sometimes... Um, um, you, you know, like in the in, in terms of leadership, in most say newsrooms, you find that mostly um, the leaders are men. So you have very few women on top. So to get to higher uh, positions sometimes could be challenging, or sometimes could be the issue of capacity. Like look at the young journalists who are coming from the universities. If they're not well prepared on how to deal with such kind of harassment, then it's hard for them as well to identify that such kind of conversation is actually a threat to their safety when it comes to sexual harassment. So they might be invited to go to a place and genuinely thinking that this is a genuine meeting and only to realize uh, it's hard to get out of such kind of uh, a meeting. So there are a number of faces number of when things. it comes to, to All right. I'm going uh, to push this a little yeah. bit because we're running out of time and perhaps if you could answer this last question very briefly, what can media yeah. houses do? What can we do to protect our journalists both in the newsroom and online? I think the first uh, thing is to have a policy, sexual harassment policy in newsrooms and also a sexual harassment policy when it comes to online um, uh, online engagements so most of the media has either they do not have or they do not follow but also they need to have a mechanism on how to report so even before the journalists say go to extra mile like police or whatever they must have internal means of addressing and dealing with these issues but the third thing is to make sure that there is a um also another mechanism of mentorship, like when they get new recruit, uh, when they recruit new journalists, say from the universities, they are well equipped with safety and security uh, training, but also it, when it comes to the issue of sexual harassment, but also how to identify um, sexual harassment online, bullying, etc. Et so I think these are very key because in most East African countries we have laws that protect um, women, they, we have laws that protect journalists, but if we don't really deep dive into these laws, if we don't understand about these laws, th then uh, most of our rights will be violated without uh, any remedy. All right, Vincenzi, unfortunately we've run out of time, but I think this is a conversation we probably need to have again and have uh, frequently, but thanks so much indeed at least uh, for giving us uh, food for thought today. Thanks so much. Asante sana. Thank you so much, Peter. Asante sana. All right, okay, so that was uh, Vincenza uh, Fuko who is uh, joining us uh, from uh, Tanzania. She's in Dar es Salaam speaking to us uh, about uh, the harassment uh, that uh, women uh, in particular are facing, not just in the workplace, but uh, increasingly uh, now they're facing uh, online as well. And I've got to tell you, this is uh, something that uh, we are getting uh, generally, actually. In fact, uh, uh, my colleague here, Sophie Mkwena, will tell you that 
she's experienced uh, some uh, online harassment, uh, particularly with certain stories that uh, we've been telling. And uh, if uh, people don't like the truth coming out, they'll start to fight back and uh, talk about, uh, 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 well, make it personal as opposed to just dealing with the work. All right, so let's uh, move on now and take a look at uh, what's in our local newspapers here in South Africa. And for that, we're joined by Tebojo Dizejo, who's uh, the CEO at Dizejo Media and Vice President of the Public Relations Institute of Southern Africa, otherwise known as PRISA. Tebojo, always good to talk to you. Um, I've missed you sitting next to me in my studio because we now live in this world of virtual reality. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Peter, thanks, thanks for having me. No, Good to fantastic. See you. So we don't have a lot of time, but uh, which paper and story grabbed your attention? Well, here I've got the City Press, which is leading with um, lockdown level two. Um, they're saying President Cyril Ramaphosa goes for broke. And this is following the great news um, that uh, we are now moving down to lockdown level two after it has been reported that hospital admissions have gone down. Um, it has also been reported that active cases of COVID-19 have been going down. So we've flattened that curve and it keeps um, going down on a daily basis. Um, and it looks like the country is also improving in terms of business confidence. Um, the South African Chamber of Commerce has indicated that South African uh, business confidence has gone up from 81.4% to 82.8%, which is slight. But I guess it's a, it's a, it's a very good um, it's 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 a, it's a good um, update from from that side of the business side. All right. And a any other story that uh, you saw? Yeah, there's another story. A um, very interesting one. Which it says paper? That teachers. It's in the Sunday Times. Yeah. Um, front page, and it says that teachers are asked not to wear pajamas um, while they're <laughs> working from home, um, and that's very interesting. Um, what 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 it says is. Um, Teachers seem to um, uh, uh, enter into a more social, more family mode when they're at work. They wear their pajamas, they lay on their bed, and perhaps it could impact on their delivery. And so they're saying they should have a work schedule. Um, they should schedule in tea, schedule in lunch, but also dress up for the job and yeah. make sure that you're delivering um, as professional as normal. Well, I'm so glad that you dressed up for us, Tebojo, but we, we wouldn't expect anything less. But thanks so much indeed for joining us. And I look forward to seeing you again soon, hopefully in our studio soon. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks for having me, Peter. Great show. All right. That's uh, Tebojo Dissejo, who's a regular commentator for us here on the channel. All right. That's where we say goodbye. Thanks so much indeed for joining us and uh, watching Media Monitor. Hope that you join us again at the same week, uh, same place, same time uh, next week for more of the same. From all of us here, please, uh, level two, but that doesn't mean we don't do all the things that we need to do. Social distance, wash your hands, sanitize, sanitize services, stay at home as much as you can, but above all, wear one of these. Bye-bye. Violent protests have rocked Cape Town for the past two weeks, leading to 30 arrests. A number of protesters that they are bemoaning what they call poor service delivery, especially to colored communities. We are not getting a fair or equal chance in everything we do. We are the people that is doing all the work, but we are the people that always has to get the second class treatment. We are tired of living in backyards 